constipation. Constipation. It it happens, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing how many medications cause it, and how how much of an impact it can have on people's lives. In the ER, it was not, we probably had one person a week come in because they're constipated. Uh, some people would go seven, eight, nine days, and then they would decide to come in and be treated, which is really unfortunate because it's treatable. It really is. So constipation is, you know, abnormal, abnormally infrequent and difficult passage of feces through the lower GI tract, okay? It's a symptom not a disease. Uh, and so in this case, we're just, we're going to treat the, the symptom and hopefully find the cause and reverse that to prevent the symptoms from, from returning. And it can be caused by a lot of different diseases or drugs. There are two ways of treating this, two types of medications. We have laxatives and cathartics. Laxatives promote um, evacuation of bowel or defecation. Cathartic is powerful. Cathartics promote strong and more complete bowel emptying. A laxative gets things going. A cathartic really empties you out. These are available. They're non-prescription. These are some of the most frequently abused drugs. Now, now hold on. We're not talking abuse like narcotics. Um, or anti-anxiety agents. These are abused by people who use them inappropriately in place of other ways of treating their GI problems and they get um, addicted is the wrong word, they get dependent upon these. Sometimes the people use them because they think they're supposed to have a bowel movement every day and that's not true. Some people have bowel movements every day. Some people have one every third day. Some have twice a day. Whatever your normal is, is what you should be doing. And I'm not going to ask you in class what your routines are, but you know what your routine is, and you know if something goes wrong when it's a problem. So people think they need to have a bowel movement every day, and so they take laxatives and cathartics to make sure they have one every day and eventually they develop a, a situation where they have to use those to make sure. Uh, laxatives are also abused not because people want to have a regular bowel schedule but they're trying to lose weight. People with eating disorders and uh, others who have strict weight, weight requirements will sometimes uh, misuse and abuse uh, laxatives. Because, think about it, if you empty your bowels, you will lose a little bit of weight. And also pull extra water out. So you'll weigh a little bit less. It's false. I mean, it, it's kind of a false weight loss. But if a person needs to hit that certain magic weight, well, that's one way of potentially doing it. But we're going to think about some side effects in just a moment. Um, teenagers. Not just people who have eating disorders, but I know people who are wrestlers in high school that will do this to drop weight, to get down to a certain weight before, um, before a match. People who are getting ready to join the military and have to be at a certain weight. Yeah. I get why they do it. I honestly do. It's bad. This is not how you lose weight. It can cause dependence. Worse though, it causes fluid and electrolyte loss, malnutrition, and potentially liver disease. You can have um, fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Uh, when you're having frequent bowel movements, you can lose potassium. And we've talked about what happens with low potassium. That's your heart. That's bad. So laxatives and, and cathartics should not be used for people that have undiagnosed abdominal pain a known intestinal obstruction or fecal impaction. Now, some people think, well, if they're having an obstruction, maybe give them something to get it working. If you have an obstruction, it's obstructed for a reason. Is there a problem in their intestines? Is there a stricture? Is there a mechanical obstruction? Is there a tumor? You know, all these things. And if you give something 
that is going to promote rapid movement and it's already stuck. Just think of the long term. Fecal impaction um, can happen if, for people who are chronically dehydrated. Um, the fecal matter gets very dry, very hard, and it just kind of forms a plug. And now you give a laxative or a cathartic to try and get it to move out, and it doesn't do anything except potentially cause problems. Um, it can cause uh, rupture of the, of the bowels. Undiagnosed abdominal pain, I mentioned earlier, 40% um, of ER visits are because of abdominal pain. Now I want you to think of all the potential organs that could be in your abdomen. Uh, stomach, liver, gallbladder, small intestine, large intestine, kidneys, bladder, uh, ovaries, uterus. Um, those are the big ones. Ab appendix. Every one of those can cause abdominal pain. And they can, with that pain, constipation can come along with it. Do you want to treat something, do you want to treat a symptom without knowing the cause? So when a person comes to the ER with abdominal pain and they say, well, I haven't had a BM in a week, we are not going to immediately give them milk of magnesia or an enema. We want to find out what is causing this. And we'll do some interviewing. We'll ask them questions. We'll ask them about diet and their fluid intake, their activity level. Um, have they been to different parts of the country? Have they traveled recently? A lot of things. And we'll do some x-rays. On an x-ray, you can see large amounts of fecal matter. You can also see free air in the abdomen, which would, it could indicate um, a, a rupture. So we want to find out what's going on. If we, uh, if we assume or determine that it is simply constipation, we'll, we will get things moving most commonly in the ER with an enema. Enemas work really well. Um, but we're going to talk about laxatives and, and cathartics. There's five types of um, laxatives. There's bulk forming, there's surfactant or stool softeners, there's stimulant, there's hyperosmotic, and there's miscellaneous. So let's talk about um, let's talk about these in order. Bulk forming laxatives. Um, Cilium, Metamucil is a brand name of a, of a bulk forming laxative. Cilium is a fiber. And uh, methylcellulose is another fiber in citrusel. Different, but essentially the same. They absorb water. They absorb water into the, into the intestines. It softens and enlarges the fecal mass, and that promotes peristalsis. Peristalsis is that wave-like movement through the intestines. And when the, bulk, when, when, when the, the fecal matter bulks up and stretches it, that's, that tells the muscles to start moving. Key feature here, you must have enough water in your system and you must stay hydrated or bowel obstruction is a major risk. So people who are on strict fluid restrictions, this will be a problem. People who just don't drink water, and there are people who just don't drink enough water. The elderly frequently are always underhydrated. We give them a, a laxative that wants to pull in water if there's no water in the system, where would it pull water? It'll pull water out of the system, worsening the dehydration. These are best used to prevent constipation. So a person who, gets, who has a low fiber diet, this works very well to help promote regularity. Once a person's constipated, this is not going to do much work for them. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. This can also actually give symptomatic relief of diarrhea. Now this, this is the safest way of preventing constipation. It does not cause laxative dependence. It does start promoting regular, uh, a regular bowel routine. 
usually starts working in one to three days, so it's not fast. You generally need several doses before you can start having a therapeutic effect. You're just not going to take it once. You want to, you want to give at least eight ounces of water when you give this. And these are very commonly stirred up into liquid. So you're, when, when they drink it, they're getting all the water at the same time. And then you will continue to promote fluids um, throughout the day because you want to keep their, their system well hydrated so that there's enough fluid to pull into the bowels. It may decrease the absorption of warfarin, digoxin, salicylates, and antibiotics. So, you know, if a person is on those medications, we want to make sure to talk to the doctor and determine what's best. But if a person uses this on a regular basis, and many people take um, a dose of this every day to stay regular, if you're taking it every day, the lab values will take that into account and you'll have less worry about um, decreased absorption because that will be taken into consideration. It can cause an impaction, it can cause food overload if the person drinks too much. So those are some things we have to watch out for. Laxatives, uh, surfactants or stool softeners. Uh, docusate sodium is the most common one brand name is Colace. It softens the stool by uh, facilitating penetration of water. It causes the secretion of the water and electrolytes into the intestines. This is prescribed for patients who have experienced a sudden change in lifestyle that puts them at risk for constipation, such as surgery or injury or MI. You want to give this again with a full glass of water. It also takes one to three days to start producing a soft stool. You should not give this to people who are on a sodium restriction, and it takes several days to work. It can cause skin rashes and decrease absorption of some vitamins. It is best, again, to this is best to prevent constipation. And uh, like with myocardial infarctions, MI, you use this to make the stool softer and easier to pass with less straining. If a person has to strain to have a bowel movement, they will trigger their vagus nerve, which can drop their heart rate, drop their blood pressure. And if a person has just had a heart attack, you don't want to do that. So those are the laxatives. And they, they work slowly. They're best to prevent. They need a lot of water to have the maximum results. They work slowly. And People may need to take these for several days before anything starts working. Let's talk about cathartics. Stimulant cathartics. Uh, Bisocoto is one, castor oil is another, and senna. These are stimulants. These um, are widely used. These are the ones that are widely abused. They are available over the counter. Um, this, these will produce a semi-fluid stool in 6 to 12 hours. Uh, Dalcolax suppository, or bisicotal is uh, the suppository, that can work in 15 to 60 minutes. Excuse me. These work by producing a chemical irritation within the bowels, and that irritation tells the body, get it out of there, get it going, get it gone now. It causes, uh, pulls water into the intestines, this can be absorbed into the systemic circulation, causing some adverse effects. These are the most likely to cause dependence. Uh, most common side effects are gastric irritation, uh, that skin rash, and nutrient malabsorption. Um, these are the ones that people use when they want to drop weight quick, when they want to clear their bowels out fast. Um, and again, once you get on this track, once, you, once your body starts getting used to needing that irritant to form a ball movement, if you stop, you will have rebound constipation very quickly. So again, then people start taking it again. It, it's, a, it's a very, very vicious cycle. Osmotic laxatives. We've talked about milk of magnesia earlier being uh, something for as an antacid. Well, here we're using it in larger doses as an osmotic um, laxative. Polyethylene glycol, 
is another one. Go lightly. Um, glycerin suppositories. These, again, work with water, pulling water and, and softening the feces. Fecal swelling uh, also, again, promotes peristalsis. Remember, when we have the larger bulk, it tells, the, it tells your body, okay, time to move things out now. It draws water into the intestinal lumen. If you're dehydrated, these will not work. In high doses, these will work in 2 to 6 hours. In low doses, 6 to 12 hours. These can cause substantial water loss. So if you're already dehydrated, this can create a very bad situation. So you want to make sure you're drinking enough fluid. Magnesium and potassium can, can accumulate to toxic levels. So if a person has kidney disease, you're not going to use an osmotic laxative. A person who is, has heart failure, high blood pressure, and edema, you would not use sodium containing laxatives because that will encourage sodium in the system which can increase your blood pressure. This can cause electrolyte imbalances and dehydration and severe abdominal bloating and rectal irritation. Go Lightly um, is commonly, it's, it's a one gallon jug. It's a powder in there, you fill it up with water and it's generally ordered to be given um, an eight ounce glass every 10 to 15 minutes. When that starts working, it really works. So what's a person at risk for? Falling. Because they will have sudden, urgent need to use the bathroom. A person who is at risk for falling, if they're elderly, if they're weak, that's a bad situation. You want to bring that commode as close to them as possible. They may end up sitting in that commode for a long time. This is used to thoroughly and completely empty the bowels in preparation for like a colonoscopy or surgeries. These treat constipation. These do not prevent constipation. Miscellaneous, miscellaneous laxatives, mineral oil or lactulose. Mineral oil is simply that. It's a mineral oil. Uh, you can use mineral oil if you, to, um, if you have a nice wood working surface, mineral oil will, will, will penetrate that and keep it looking very good. When I ran a restaurant, we used that for our, our biscuit table. But it can also be used as a laxative. Lactulose is um, also a uh, laxative. It helps draw um, flu uh, fluid into the, the um, it lubricates the stool and colon. It um, slows colonic absorption of water. So the colon, the large bowel, is designed to pull water out and save it. These prevent that that absor that reabsorption, so the the, the stool stays um, softer and wetter. And these will, will treat fecal impaction. These ease the process of defecation. Lactulose also is used to pull ammonia out of the body for people who have liver disease and therefore high ammonia levels. So that, that's a second. So if a person's taking lactulose, you always have to ask, why? Why? Is it because of fecal impaction? Because they need it for, to ease the process of, of defecation? Or are they having ammonia problems? These work in six to eight hours. They do impair or may impair the absorption of fat-soluble drugs and nutrients. So your fat-soluble vitamins, D and E, will be affected by these medications. Uh, so let's look at, at just a, a grouping. There's three groups of um, laxatives based on therapeutic response. Group one produces a watery stool in two to six hours. These are the osmotic laxatives in high doses, castor oil, and poly polyethylene glycol. The brand name for that is Mir Miralax. Group two produces semi-fluid uh, stools in six to 12 hours. These are low dose osmotic laxatives and stimulants except for castor oil. And then there's group three, which produces a soft stool in one to three days. And these are the bulk forming laxatives and the surfactants and the lactulose. So based on what you need and how quickly you need it, will help determine which medication will be used. 
one thing, all laxatives can cause electrolyte imbalances. So before you start giving any laxatives, you need to know the history of the symptoms. What's their pattern? Do they have any allergies? We want to make sure that they have good fluid and electrolyte balance so the doctor will probably want to order some lab tests to look at potassium, the sodium, the chloride, magnesium. If they're experiencing nausea and vomiting and abdominal pain, we're not going to give them a laxative or a cathartic. We need to we need to control those symptoms before we start addressing anything else. If you give a person a cathartic and they already are vomiting, they're just going to vomit it out. You want to teach a healthy, high fiber diet and increased fluid intake, which is a much better preference to using laxative. So high fiber diet, what are we looking at here? Uh, fibrous grains, oatmeal, um, is a good one. Barley, quinoa, whole wheat breads, fruit, with the skins especially, vegetables. Those are all high in fiber, and those that fiber helps promote regularity. You want to make sure that you're drinking as much fluid as you can or are allowed. Now, within reason. You can drink too much water and have more problems. It takes a lot, but it happens. You ought, from time to time, read about people who, for one reason or another, were drinking far too much water. They develop hyponatremia, brain swelling, and die. So we want to avoid that. But if, if a person wants to maintain regularity, high fiber diet, and a regular increased fluid, fluid intake uh, all day long. Long-term use of laxatives often re re results in decreased bowel tone and may lead to dependency. We've talked about that repeatedly. Any laxative should be taken with six to, eight, six to eight ounces of water immediately and then follow up with more water on a regular basis. And I can't emphasize that enough. For these to work, they need to have fluid in their system. We need to prevent the risk of dehydration and give the, these medications the fluid it needs to actually work. If they're taking bulk forming laxatives, they need to take it as directed by the manufacturer. The label will tell you how much water it needs. And again, a minimum of eight ounces of water, more is better. If they're experiencing severe abdominal pain though, muscle weakness, cramps, or dizziness, now they need to call their doctor, or you need to call the doctor. We could be looking at um, fluid or electrolyte loss, and uh, there are many complications with that that we just don't want to deal with. Uh, the, the, these medications are prescribed by doctors, but us nurses, we actually make sure that they work correctly. The doctor might prescribe that cathartic or, or the stool softener or the bulk forming laxative, but we're going to make sure that our patients get enough water. So that's on us. Why don't you come back for the last section is all about anti-diarrheals.